Okay, this is uh, the first video of a series um, related to survival analysis using Stata. The example that I'm uh, going to utilize is coming from this article right here. It's from 1998 uh, by Luke and Homan. It's a psych bulletin article uh, demonstrating various survival analysis approaches. And um, the data itself is fictional, as, as is the scenario, but it does do a, a good job of mimicking uh, an example in which someone might choose to utilize survival analysis. So I've already uh, imported the data into S into uh, Stata. I actually had it in SPSS originally, and uh, so I've imported it into Stata. And what we'll do is just take a quick look at the data. So let's go to Data Editor. We'll go to Browse and look at it. So you'll notice that we have um, uh, the a case identifier. Then we have a, a variable for weeks, which is our time variable. Event is a censoring variable. Then we also have a grouping variable here, a grouping variable here, and a, another covariate uh, for later on when we run Cox regression. So the scenario essentially is that we have uh, 40 individuals who um, had underwent uh, some type of alcohol treatment. Um, loosely speaking, I guess you could say uh, one group of individuals just received detox and another group received um, you know maybe a more substantial type of treatment and they were followed uh, the observation period was 30 weeks and <clears throat> they were essentially followed over that time uh, and um, it was determined whether or not they uh, relapsed so the event variable is the centering variable a value of one indicates that the terminal event occurred uh, which is the terminal event being relapsed, a value of zero indicates that a case ha is uh, censored. Uh, and what that means is, is that, um, that um, they were not observed during the observation period to have relapsed or exhibited the terminal event. So as you can see right here, all of these individuals uh, in the detox group, these are all in the detox group, but you can see that these individuals are the ones that all relapse. So if you look at the event variable, it's they're all ones, and you can see that the first person uh, in the in the data set uh, in the detox group relapsed at week one. The same for the second person, the third person at week two. Uh, this person relapsed at week 27, and you can see down here that these three individuals, uh, 18 to 20. Um, you can see that uh, we have weeks at 30, and then you see zeros and 30. Uh, is the end of the observation period. And so all these three individuals exhibited no relapse uh, during the period, and so these cases would be considered censored. So that doesn't mean that they never relapsed afterwards, it just means that they were not observed to relapse during the, um, the observation period. Now let's scroll down and you can see these individuals right here uh, in the, uh, the uh, I guess you could say the treatment group they all relapsed. These are the weeks in which they relapsed. So this first person relapsed at week two, this one at week five, this one at week six, and so forth. Now when you look down here at person 31, uh, or case 31, you can see that we have a, a weeks being 19 and then a zero indicating that that case is censored. And what, you know, what this entails is, or what this indicates is that this person uh, was lost from the observation uh, set um, at week 19. So it's you know we don't know whether or not this person actually uh, relapsed, say between weeks 19 and 30, um, or afterwards. All we know is that up until week 19 that there was no relapse. But then again, um, that case is considered censored. Then when we look at these remaining cases down here, you can see that all of these are censored at 30 weeks. So when you're running the program, uh, uh, Stata, if you're running uh, survival analysis, the first thing that you're going to have to do is to let the program know that that is indeed what you are doing. Um, so, uh, so you have to indicate that you're working with survival data. So the first step, um, and we'll go under the uh, statistics uh, option right now, go under survival analysis, and go to setup and utilities. So we're going to declare data to be survival time data. So the time variable we're going to uh, select, which was weeks, 
and then you see that it says failure event, failure variable. So that is nothing more than the censoring variable. Uh, don't get confused by, it. you know, sometimes people read this as reflecting a negative connotation. It's just reflecting the censoring variable. So I'm going to go down to event, and like I said, if, um, a, a value of 1 indicates that the target event has occurred. Uh, a, a value of zero is indicating that um, the case is going to be censored. So the failure of values is is nothing more than just uh, uh, a value that's associated with the um, the terminal event. In this case, of relapse. So I'm going to type in a one right here, and then I will uh, press OK, and there you go. So notice too that this is the syntax for um, our analysis, so um, our uh, for uh, establishing um, uh, that the data is survival data. So we, we could just as easily have typed the command in down here uh, in the t command box. So you'll see it says st set. So this is indicating that you're you know essentially setting the data as survival data. The next so you you have a little space here and then weeks. That is the time variable followed by a comma right here. Then we also have failure, uh, and then inside the parenthesis you have the name of your censoring variable, then you have the little two equal signs, and then one, which is the value uh, reflecting, uh, in this case, the relapse. So we're going to hit enter, and that's it right there. So uh, next what we'll do is let's run um, an analysis. Um, so we're going to go through survival analysis. And let's just uh, ask for some summary uh, information. So in this case, let's go to Summary Statistics, Tests, and Tables. And I'm just going to click on Summarize Survival Time Data. And uh, what we can do is, uh, let's say I'm really trying to kind of what, uh, determine if there are differences between the two groups uh, in terms of survival time, so the detox versus the treatment group. So in this case, what I can do is I can click on Separate Summaries for each group and uh, click on OK and you'll notice uh, in this particular case uh, let's see what I did uh, actually I didn't indicate that I was using two groups so let me go back to this again and um, we'll go back to survive, uh, survival time data again and uh, yes that's what I forgot to do so I'm going to click on group right here <laughs> in addition so what I have right here is just the survival uh, across both groups uh, whereas now I can get the survival information for uh, each individual group. So you can see down here that um, detox and treatment and one of the um, ways of describing the survival time is really kind of focusing on the median survival time and that's going to be uh, right here. This is the 50th percentile and essentially this is the uh, this is reflecting the number of weeks um, uh, that uh, cases survived, or at least 50% of the cases in the uh, in uh, our, our two groups survived. So you can see that the median survival time for the detox group was nine weeks, whereas the median survival time for the treatment group was 17 weeks. Now, so that's just one way of kind of summarizing um, the um, the survival times for the two groups is just by uh, looking at the medians and so you can see that the median survival time um, across the two groups is actually 14 weeks so uh, it looks like you know there may be some differences here in terms of the uh, survival uh, times for the two groups so if we want to take a little bit more uh, a little closer look at um, uh, the survival times then what we can do is go down to uh, graphs and we can go to Kaplan Meyer survival function so I'm gonna click on that and in this particular case it, it says um, you know I can click on make separate calculations by group so I'm gonna click on this and for the grouping variable I'm just gonna go back down to group and uh, next what we'll do is I'm just gonna click on OK and so now you can see uh, the survival functions for each group so in this particular case, you can see that uh, we have the, the detox group, which is in uh, blue right here. That's the detox group. And then the treatment group is in red right here. And so you can see, uh, looking at this, that you know basically we have time that's uh, reflected along the x-axis and then uh, the cumulative uh, proportion surviving along the y-axis right here. 
So um, you can see that this is essentially the 50th percentile. So if we wanted to look at the median, uh, essentially we could just kind of follow this line over to this point and then uh, kind of uh, draw a line vertically. And that median for the um, detox group, as we said before, was about nine weeks. Um, whereas if we want to look at the median for the uh, treatment group, you can see it's over here. We just kind of draw a line there and then vertically down. And that's going to put us at about 17 weeks right there. So you can see, uh, you know, looking at these, uh, these uh, two lines, that essentially uh, the probability of, um, of essentially failure to survive uh, is greater for the um, detox group as opposed to the treatment group. Or another way of putting it is, is that the survival rates uh, the survival times associated with the treatment group are longer than they are for the detox group.